Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today in the vlog, I'm going to talk about the all-time top five features of Adobe CC of all time. Top five. These might not be the features that you're most excited about, but I'm definitely excited about them, so they're the ones I'm going to talk about. Starting off at number five, snapping. This is something that's in almost every Adobe application, and now it's in this one. Now when you control click or command click on something, it's going to pick a point closest to where you're clicking, and then it'll snap that point to the points of other layers. I'm talking corners, the middle of edges, the center, the anchor point, all these things. It's going to make composing your frames a lot quicker, and especially when it comes to 3D objects. For example, when you need to snap the anchor point onto the edge of something so it rotates only on that edge, it's really easy. Before you had to go in, look really close, or just type in some numbers, and that was annoying. Now you just click on the pan behind tool, move it down there, and you are done. This is what I like to call taking money to the time bank, because it fills up your time account with money time. Feature number four. The warp stabilizer effect is getting a much needed upgrade. This is something that's been in Adobe CS6, but now it's getting even better. And the two things that are interesting that are coming in on this are one, you can now delete the tracking points that create the motion. So let's say there's a moving tree or a person walks in front of your shot, just delete them. And they're not gonna repopulate on every frame. So you don't have to go through frame by frame and delete all the points, they're just gonna be gone. And that's Awesome. Again, this is savings in that time bank I talked about. The second thing about these upgrades is it's going to use something called an objective. So you can have basic stabilization like you did before, or it has four other options that are going to allow you to reverse the mapping or apply the mapping to other objects, and it's going to be phenomenal. So this opens up a lot of possibilities when it comes to tracking new things into the scene and stabilizing them using the tracking data in this scene. But the big thing, I think, is the deleting of those points because that is annoying. Number three, just like the warp stabilizer got some upgrades, we're also getting upgrades to the 3D camera tracker. This is a CS6 thing, and the upgrades might not seem interesting to you, but to me, these are phenomenal. And the big thing that's coming out of this, I mean, you can do the point delete thing, but the big thing that's interesting to me is being able to set the origin and the ground plane. Basically, once you've tracked everything before, it had no idea where this is in 3D space. You know, the wall could be like this, or like this, or it could be anywhere. But now, you can just grab three points on a plane, select them all, and then say this is the ground, and point zero zero is right here. It's right there on the ground. So now when you take this data and you put it into something else, then it knows where origin zero zero is. You don't have to guess and move around and stuff like that. And if you bring in 3D scenes and you stick them in here, then it's gonna work flawlessly because you know where the zero point is. That takes this tool from being an interesting novelty to being something that's actually useful. Thing number two, and this is not a flashy thing, but we're getting bicubic sampling. Now, if you don't know what bicubic sampling is, that's fine. It's just a more advanced algorithm for sampling images. So there's bilinear sampling that we're already on, which is pretty great, you know, it, it smooths things out, but what this sampling does is it basically provides extra pixel information when you scale and zoom in on things. So let's say you take an image like this one and then you scale it up to like 800%. Under bilinear sampling, it doesn't look that good, but under bicubic sampling, it gets like doubly good with the cubes. To use this, basically all you have to do is change the quality on the layer, or go up to layer and then down to quality, or I think it's alt shift b alt b it's one of those this is great because now you can get way more out of your pixel footage so for example when you scale up an image you now have a bit more room to play with and if clients send you things that are not as good or they just don't have an hd version of something you can stretch it just a little bit more and it gives you just that amount of play that i think is really going to make a lot of projects look a lot better and it's going to save you time and money when having to get stock and source footage to use in projects. And since we're gonna be moving into an area of like 4K and stuff like that, and the standard right now for most things is HD, then we're gonna be able to make this transition just a little bit easier because we can scale things with a bit more accuracy. And the number one thing, and I'm sure you've seen this in the news, is Cinema 4D Lite comes packaged with Adobe After Effects now. That is almost worth the cost of admission alone. Why is this exciting? Because it's a mother 3D app on your mother 2.5D compositor program. Basically, how you use it 
You just go in here, you say make new Cinema 4D project, boom, you have Cinema 4D Lite coming up right in your face. This is the sort of upgrade that kind of changes the game a little bit, because before you would have had to render this out, and then you're making multiple renders of things, but now you're having 3D integration right in here. The other thing is, what if I work with Maya, or what if I work with 3DS Max, what if I work with whatever? Well, those things can be converted into Cinema 4D files, and then that Cinema 4D Lite file can be brought into After Effects. Just because they partner with Maxon doesn't mean that you're screwed if you don't use it, but it's also a great chance for people who've never touched a 3D app to kind of like get their feet wet and see if they like it. And the other thing is it imports Cinema 4D files. So let's say you enjoy this and 3D is something you like. Well, when you upgrade, or if you choose to upgrade to Cinema 4D Studio or Cinema 4D Broadcast, then you can use all the same features, but using the full feature versions of these things. This is something that really bakes my potato when I see it, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it too. So those are my top five things in After Effects CC. They might not be the things you're excited about, but if they're not, tell me what excites you about this new version. And uh, if you want to join in the debate about getting onto the subscription model, that was the first blog. It was the last one. This is about things to be excited about, not things to be terrified of. If you enjoy talking about After Effects and learning things about motion graphics, subscribe to the channel because I make a new tutorial every Saturday, and get involved on the Facebook page and tweet at me about things because I'm always talking about motion graphics and After Effects. Thanks again for watching the vlog. There's going to be new ones of these all the time, and uh, subscribe if you like this stuff. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day.